Come on, kids, don't animals. feed the animals. Do not feed the animals. Hello, welcome, or welcome back. Today, I am going to give you tips on how to both hold and escape judo side control, also called Kesa Katami, also called scarf hold. So this side control is a judo side control because often when you do a judo throw, you end up in this type of side control. I love this side control because it allows me to do a technique called a walk around, which is a way to maintain top position. So primarily what you are seeing here is me keeping my head low and switching my knee to either be alongside her elbow here or to pin against the hip depending on what she is doing. And keeping my a, a low head is also extremely important, number one, in order to counterbalance the escape, which is a sit-up escape. I learned this when playing this game with a 200 pound, you know, 10% body fat guy. <laughs> Um, and I learned that keeping my head low is key and basically over like their far side shoulder in preventing them from doing the sit-up escape. So keep your head low, number one. Uh, number two is transition and number three, you're gonna see this in full effect right here is the location of your hips. Now, I am going right here for like a knee slide over. Um, however, the number one mistake that I made learning how to get a good side control, especially in case of Katami, is my hip placement in regards to theirs. So anytime you want your hips basically like on the ground or you basically don't want your hips loaded onto theirs. If your hips are on top of their hips, it might feel like you're weighting them and pinning them down, but if your hips get loaded on top of theirs, you are increasing the probability of getting bridge enrolled because you have loaded your hips onto theirs so then, then, then they can bridge and bridge you off of them. So you can see here, I'm keeping a tight knee to her hip as we start. And because she is giving such a hard frame, um, I'm thinking about going into a, a crucifix. So you can see my left arm is threading into her armpit because of that harm, hard frame. So if you're getting framed hard, you can transition into a crucifix. If you just want it, this is the walk around right here. So basically, if you are in a case of Katami or judo side control and you feel like you are losing the position, instead of holding on tighter, transition, which can be counterintuitive when, you, when you're thinking when you're feeling it because you know when when you feel like you're afraid of losing something sometimes the human tendency is to hold on harder uh, but in life as in jujitsu you know sometimes you just gotta let things be free um, and that's actually going to be the best benefit to you so if you feel like you are losing something if you feel like you're losing this position think about transitioning over to a north south position so i do this by posting on by my near side hip, which is their, which would be her right hip, and then using that far side arm to then transition to a north-south position. So right here is a very good example of keeping my head low. And here is a good example of me transitioning to a north-south position. So look at the hand post, look at where my left arm is, and now I'm transitioning to a north we call it a walk around kimura so i'm pinning her i'm transitioning into an attack right now so typically when you do this transition to north south this is like some of my a game right here when you transition to north south you can underhook that arm do you see that hook and that gives you the ability to transition to a kimura from here you have plenty of options from here um, and then from here as well, you saw my hips go up. Do you see my active toes? Here's another huge tip. When you're in the north-south position, use your head to drive into their torso and use active toes, which means your toes are digging into the mat, almost like you know, you're a runner on starting blocks. Or if you've ever done uh, sled pushes where you're pushing the sled uh, across 
a gym, you, you know how you dig in your toes? That's, that's key. So let's transition now from tips to hold uh, the judo side control, aka keisukatami, aka scarf hold, to tips on how to escape. Okay, so the key thing is, is for escapes, it's always, I'm going to go general and then be specific. The two key things is pairing two techniques together that go in opposite directions and timing. And the reason why that's so great is because when you start pairing things together and one escape causes the reaction to go in the direction of your other escape, then when you time those two together, and let's say you bridge and roll this direction, they fight it by bridging in this direction, and then you go in this direction, you've then just set yourself up to have an increased, an increase in effectiveness of your escapes. So here's an example. So when she bridge and rolls me in this direction, so this is an escape for when you can't get that arm out. Okay, so this is an escape, let's say she was, bridge she was framing hard on my neck and I put my head down in response to that escape. That's the timing. So it is, you threaten one escape and then the reaction off the threatened escape that they do sets you up for your second escape. So this is pairing both the like sit up and frame in their neck to the bridge and roll. So here is one escape. The key it, here, the key detail here, turn their chin away. That really increases the effectiveness and the discomfort. And then get your leg over to escape. Um, there's also a version of this where you just sit up. So now we're pairing these two together because when either, if you get this escape on somebody, um, and they defend against it once, or if you're in the process of doing it and they are pushing down hard because you're framing hard against their face, then that's the exact timing to then do this bridge and roll. And the beauty of this is, is usually when you're in case of Katami, you have one of your arms trapped, the near side arm, so basically her, her right arm would be trapped, I would have it whole, held tightly against me. So when she goes in frames and gets this escape, the person's gonna be like, wait a minute, you know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna get hip to that. Now when you bridge and roll off of that, oh, she even added a third bridge. So they frame hard, right? And they're gonna be holding on tight to your arm. So when you do a bridge and roll one direction, it's the likelihood of their posting is going to be decreased because they're going to be thinking about the previous frame in the neck and leg over the head. So you're going to attempt that once. You're going to attempt that, they're going to defend, and that immediate second after, you're going to go for a bridge and roll. Um, and the beauty of this is you don't need to have like a, a safety position where your near side arm is tucked in. They can still have that arm in, in their possession. <laughs> Here's a key, um, here's a third escape, well technically fourth because you can bridge in two directions. So we did the leg over, we did the bridging in two ways and here is basically where you like hip out, hip out. And the key thing here is to have floor contact the entire time. If we do it correctly, basically you're gonna be threading the needle through and then pushing off. Um, I find any time that my feet aren't actively on the mat, I'm losing power because I have no traction. Uh, having just a sit up with my feet in the air isn't as powerful as sitting up while I'm driving with active toes on the mat, kind of like a runner or pushing a sled. So this fourth escape that you are seeing here is basically you tried, you know, putting a frame and getting a leg over, you tried bridging and rolling, and they're basically just keeping very heavy and keeping a low head. And so the key, the key, key, key thing here is, do you see how she's walking out, walking out, walking out? When you're doing this, it's going to feel like you have been walking out forever, but what I'm doing to fight this is I am following her hips, so I am scooching my butt back so my butt maintains contact with their hips. 
Another key to maintain Kesa Katami is to ensure that they're not bridging, they're not circling out so far and creating such a big distance because once they become 180 degrees to you and your bodies are forming a straight line, once they turn over, you, you've lost your fulcrum point of power. So I'm telling her, because she thinks, okay, so if you're going, 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 and if they keep on following you, it feels like you're at 180 degrees, but you're actually just going to be at 90. Um, so the key in here is to keep on backpedaling with your feet. And even if you think you've done it for five minutes straight, if you feel, do you see the space between our hips? If I keep on following her, right, I'm going to decrease that space as she's trying to increase it. So sometimes with this takedown or with this uh, reversal or side control escape, it's a matter of, you know, centimeters and inches. And this escape can take, you know, a couple of minutes because you're just trying to like inch an inch an inch an inch <laughs> in order to get enough space to create the leverage that you need to thread your leg through and to drive. So yeah, Case Katami is a side control that's extremely powerful. Um, you have transitions. Oh, here's, we're taking, um, oh, let me, <laughs> we're taking a group photo here. This was a, a women's open mat um, that I went to that's like super exciting to see all these upper belt women. And it was by far the most organized picture I have ever taken. <laughs> in jiu-jitsu, we organize by both belt rank and color. We usually parking lot pimp after. What is your A game? All right, here it is. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna get control of your head. Once I have control of your head, I'm gonna control your triceps somehow. I'm going to pull as much as I can. At this point, I'm gonna open up your side. And if I can take your back at that point, great. Do it to Laura. Back, <laughs> your neck. Ooh, yeah. Right? Once I have underneath your neck, Oh, I'm gonna bring my hips to your hips, and then we like that. sit down oh. on the ground. Have you on the ground? I'm either gonna finish the music on your neck. Is she talking? Or, or Tom, right. what do you what do you think you're gonna do to me? Then, <laughs> come on, kids! Don't feed the, the animals. Do, the animals. do not feed the animals. What was so funny about that was when I was recording her, and she was like, "And then I'm gonna do this." I was like, "Why am I feeling?" Why am I feeling like this is a direct threat right now? Like, is she, is she challenging me? <laughs> you want to go? <laughs> right. uh, so I'm going to replay the footage that way, you know, because sometimes when I'm explaining it, sometimes seeing it a second time, you actually understand what I'm describing. So see how many escapes you can find. There's four and think about how you can put those escapes together and then think about how to maintain control. Look at my near side hip position, look at the transitions that I do and look at when I'm deciding to transition because when you decide to transition is key in order to maintain top control from any type of side control. Um, and as you know, you know, having a good position and controlling position means that you have a submission and um, I show you the walk around which is a setup to do a Kimura, an arm bar, um, a bunch of things.
cuff cliches. Switch my wig, make him feel like he's cheating. Put him on his knees, give him something to believe in. Never lost a fight, but I'm looking for a beat. Handcuffs, leashes. Switch my wig, make him feel like he's cheating. Hey, baby, taste like cherry, kitty, real big, kitty, kitty. Oh, looking for a beat. Now from the top, make it drop. Get a bucket and a mop. I'm talking wop, wop, wop. Macaroni in a pot. Hands on my knees, shit, I shit. Why don't I club up? Yeah, order 42 for the table, let's pop shit Bitch hair oil on my top shit, throw me from the closet Hoes tryna call me a snake, shit I guess I can relate to the whole lot of venom And since these feet is a whole lot of dinner I walk around the house butt naked and I stop at air mirror Just stare at my own posterior I don't give a cool talk behind my back Cause it's new better than to let me hear I've been listening since brunch, got shit Order 42 for the table, let's pop shit Bitch hair oil on my top shit, throw me from the closet Hoes tryna call me a snake, shit I guess I can relate to the whole lot of venom And since these feet is a whole lot of dinner I walk around the house butt naked and I stop at air mirror just stare at my own posterior I don't give a cool talk behind my back Cause it's new better than to let me hear
Caesar. Guess it's why they broke in your soul. Sometimes your words just hypnotize me And I just love your flashy ways up Guess it's why they broke in your soul hey. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me And I just love your flashy ways up Guess it's why they broke in your soul hey. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me And I just love your flashy ways up Guess it's why they broke in your soul hey. Biggie, 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 can't you see? Sometimes your words just hypnotize me And I just love your flashy ways up Guess it's why they broke in your soul Make you cough, cough, that's bronchitis. Put your hands up. Uh, it's a stick up. No more makeup. Get that on the floor, ladies. Put your lipstick up. Double entendre. Double. So, yeah. All right. So, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'm going to go, uh, you know, train. <laughs> All right. Until next time. Bye. Ring, ah, that's when the